before the law. Before the law, there is a doorkeeper. A man from the country comes to this doorkeeper and asks to enter the law. But the doorkeeper says that he cannot let him enter now. The man thinks it over, then asks whether he will be allowed to enter later. It is possible, the doorkeeper says, but not now. Since the gate to the law stands open as always, and the doorkeeper steps aside, the man bends down to look inside through the gate. When the doorkeeper sees that, he laughs and says, If you think it's so tempting, just try to go in even though I said not to. But know this, I am mighty, but I am only the lowest doorkeeper. From hall to hall there are doorkeepers, though, one mightier than the other. The mere sight of the third one is more than even I can bear. The man from the country had not expected such difficulties. After all, the law ought to be open to anyone at any time, he thinks. But now that he has a closer look at the doorkeeper in his fur coat, his big pointy nose, his long, thin, black tartar beard, he decides that he'd better wait until he has permission to enter. The doorkeeper gives him a stool and lets him sit off to the side of the door. He sits there for days and years. He often asks to be allowed in and tires out the doorkeeper with his pleas. The doorkeeper asks him little sets of questions about his homeland and many other things, the kind of questions grand gentlemen ask, but he doesn't care to know the answers and he always ends up by saying that he cannot enter yet. The man, who has come with plenty of equipment for his journey, uses everything he has, no matter how valuable, to bribe the doorkeeper. The doorkeeper takes it all, but says as he does so, I'm taking it only so you don't think there's something you haven't tried. During the long years, the man watches the doorkeeper almost all the time. He forgets the other doorkeepers, and this one seems the only thing standing in his way from entering the law. He curses his miserable fate during the first years, boldly and loudly. Later, as he grows old, all he does is mutter to himself. He becomes childish and since he has come to know even the fleas in the doorkeeper's fur collar during his long years of studying him, he begs even the fleas to help him and change the doorkeeper's mind. Finally, his eyesight grows dim, and he doesn't know whether it is really getting dark all around him or if his eyes are just playing tricks on him. But in the darkness, he can now make out a glow streaming out of the door to the law, a glow that cannot be put out. He doesn't have much longer to live. Before his death, all he has gone through over his entire lifetime gathers in his head to form one question he has never asked the doorkeeper. He beckons to him, as he can no longer raise his stiffening body. The doorkeeper has to bend down deep to get to him, because the difference in their heights has grown a great deal, much to the disadvantage of the man. What else do you want to know now? The doorkeeper asks. You never run out of questions. Surely everyone tries to reach the law, the man says. How is it that in all these many years no one besides me has asked to enter? The doorkeeper realises that the man has come to his end and, in order to get through to the man's failing hearing, he shouts at him. No one else could enter here because this entrance was meant only for you. I will now go and close it.